So today, Joanne and I are going to talk about SWOT, S-W-O-T. And in business school, I learned about SWOT. It's a, it's a tool that's applied in business all the time, but I'd never seen it applied in dentistry until I met Joanne. So Joanne, can you share how you use SWOT in the practice? Sure. Um, you know, we use SWOT pretty much in almost any relationship we want to have a lifelong connection. Because what happens is, it's, as an, it's an analysis, as you said, and we didn't come up with it. It was developed at Stanford University in the late 60s, I believe. But one of the things that we found is, it's a way to do an analysis, whether you're right brain or left brain. It's a way to do an analysis so you can meet and exceed the person that you're trying to understand or serve or uh, be a better leader for or be a better team member with or be a better referral to, whatever the relationship lots is. Of, lots of applications. So many applications. But it allows you to meet and exceed their expectations. Mm -hmm. That's really that's really what it's all about. It, it, and so when we talk about the team, I think it'd be really helpful for them to hear each position. How can they use it? Okay. Well, um, you and I know this, but maybe some of our watchers and listeners don't really know much about SWOT. So the first thing that I would share with you is it's S W O T. S stands for strength. W stands for weakness. O stands for opportunities, and T stands for threats. We like to say likes, dislikes, the perfect picture, and why not. Um, it's another, it's a shortcut of kind of how we use it. I think that, um, I'm going to start with the doctor just because, you know, the doctor in today's practice is busy. busy. You know, they are so busy and they really don't have time to do a lot of the, the business side of what goes on, especially during patient hours. Yes. So one of the things the doctor is tasked with is being a great leader. So I think the only way uh, sometimes to understand how to be a great leader for these, each of these individual people is to use this analysis. So we like to do them sometimes on 90 day reviews. You can do the same analysis. You can have each team member do the SWOT analysis on their own position in themselves and then have the doctor do it. And it's kind of neat to find out where they work. So for instance, I might say, um, you know, today, Melinda, we're going to talk about your performance and how you feel like you're doing. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts, but I want to hear first from you. You know, how do you feel like as a clinical assistant in practice, or how do you feel like as an administrator in the practice? How do you feel like you're doing, and what is your what is your real strength right now with the practice? And you would tell me, and I'd say, okay. So if you had to say that there was an area that you feel weak in, or that you need some additional training, or you need some additional health focus um, material, what would that be, Melinda? So you're giving me the information. In other words, I'm not telling you what you do well, I'm not telling you what you do wrong. And then the O, the opportunity, I would say, Melinda, you know, in order for this to be um, perfect for you and perfect for the practice, in other words, we have a goal, you know, we want to be um, a healthy practice that has repeat and, refer repeat and referrals from our patients. So we have a goal in practice, it is to be profitable. So, Melinda, in order for, for your position to be perfect, and for you, cause since you understand our goals and we haven't written, what does that look like when it's perfect? And you might say to me, well, you know, I will have mastered this particular part of my, my job, or I will have done this and I will have done that. Okay, so Melinda, you just described it exactly the way it's going to be when it's paradise and it's perfect. Why don't you think we have that right now? What can what can what needs to happen for you to have for you to see that practice that you just described? In? What's in the way? What's in the way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when when you do this, it allows the person that you're working with to be able to work through their own weakness and, and understand their strengths. And it's neat when you identify it because it's not someone else saying this is what you do well or this is what you do well. Doesn't it? it although it has to do with personalities, it's not. It's not just about a personality. No, it's about no. it's about a tool. It's about a tool. It's about task, daily task. Well, and it's a development plan. It's collaborative. Right. It's participative. And then, of course, people are going to take more ownership of sure. that because they participated in it. I love it because it's also efficient, easy for the doctor to use. Yes. So when we think about the other positions, okay. the treatment coordinator, the scheduling coordinator, the dental assistant. Yeah. And the hygienist. Sure. Where would you like to start? Let's start at the, the front office. Okay. So for me, and, and I know that there are, you know, there are dime a dozen consultants out there who say don't spend a lot of time on the phone. I get it. I really do. And I know that we're in a busy practice and there are times to just get them in. But, you know, we're kind of unique because we've both been in this industry that we love for over 30 years. So we've seen a lot of fads come through. We've seen a lot of things work and a lot of things not work. And I know when I have a busy executive on the phone, 
that they want to make the appointment. I've been doing this long enough, and, and hopefully through this training series that we're doing for these people in these t on these teams to be more dynamic and be more understanding, they'll get this too. Yes. But but as you know, there are people who if I have that connection with them, they will be lifelong with me. Absolutely. They will be with me lifelong. Absolutely. So if we put the effort in up front, my our philosophy is if we put the effort in up front, getting to know this person, finding out their expectations so we can meet and exceed them, if it's a toothache or if they're looking for somebody to do comprehensive dentistry, whatever they're looking for, if we put the time in up front, then it sure makes it easier on the back end when we start talking about money and how they're going to pay for it and that sort of thing. So on the front end, we don't always do it, but when we have a new patient and when we have an opportunity and someone who's ready to give that information, you know, we'll generally say, because if they are a new patient, just they left somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And unless they said, um, you know, something just really bizarre like, I'm coming here because my last dentist, and sometimes they do, but most of the time they, they don't. don't. They call and ask for something. You know, we like to say, you know, <clears throat> you have a couple of minutes for me to ask you a few questions so that we can better serve you. That's how we tee it up. Mm -hmm. Because even the busy executive, if you say, you know, I'd like to ask you a few more questions so that we can better serve you the way you'd like to be served, there are very few executives. I mean, number one, nobody says that. Sure. I mean, how many times? It's different. Say, it's yeah. different. It's like me saying, Melinda, I want your opinion. Mm -hmm. And then zipping my lip and waiting for it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to listen. It's important. I ask, I'm going to receive. So when we do this, we say, you know, some form of, you know, the last practice that you went to that you um, were happy in. You know, what did you really like about that practice? There's the strength. There's the light. Yes. And they'll say, you know, the doctor was so sweet. The doctor called me after surgery. The doctor was wonderful. Or that my hygienist was amazing. Whatever it is. And we write it down because we want to share that with the team. We want the whole team to That's know That's exactly that. right. Because we're listening. That's exactly right. And we... We, we pass it through the entire practice so that everybody knows why they're here. And then we'll ask, you know, was there anything in particular you didn't like? And, you know, you hear things like, well, you know, they had a lot of different hygienists. And every time I went, I saw a different hygienist. Or um, I didn't like that the doctor always talked down to me mm -hmm. or talked in a language I really didn't understand. The doctor didn't make me feel smart or made me feel stupid. What, whatever it is, we write it down. You bet. And we say, then the last one, we don't really do, we do SWO. We don't really do the T as far as the administrative people go. And you'll understand this better when you kind of work through the system and you see it in the other areas. But in the O, I gen we generally will say, you know, Melinda, in order for this to be a good investment of your time and money when you're here and you meet with Dr. Majors on Thursday, you know, what's going to need to happen? Beautiful. Boom. And they're really pretty easy. Even the busy executive can say, you know what, I want to walk out. I want to know what it's going to cost if they're going to be able to help me. Yes. Because I've been to 16 practices. Or somebody's going to say, I want to feel like that, that I wasn't rushed. And that the doctor, they know what, they, what so, they'd like to have. So using this, t this simple tool, which once a, a team member learns, it's a strength. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for what they liked, what they didn't like, That's it. and what they want. And that alone makes the call different. So instead of collecting details on the call, which is actually what we have done for years and years, collect their name and information, we're actually really asking them about them and them remembering. That's exactly, that's the big part powerful. of it. You have to remember and use it. Don't, don't, it's like somebody asking, and it's in my implant book, I wrote the story about the guy who's the strongest man in the world, and he said, how did you get to be so strong? People would stop and ask him, how did you get to be so strong? And he said, are you asking because you really want to know? Or are you asking just because that's what you ask? And it's an interesting thought because today we're so electronically connected, we rarely ask and focus on the answer. You know, even when you and I were preparing this material the last several days, you know, we're both on some sort of a device. Now we can, we do that, but clearly that's not something we can do when we're with a client in a practice or do when we're with a patient in the practice. You know, it has to be all about them. It has to. And it's it's really, you know, this this entire video probably won't be but seven or eight minutes. And people say, I don't have time to do that. You know, that's like, really, maybe a minute or a minute and a half at it. But I have so much value when I go to my morning huddle and I can share that with the team. Now, yeah, listen, this is what they like and this is what they didn't like. And we're creating a lifelong connection. That's it. Everything here. It's not just about that call. Right. What do we say about dentistry by choices in LLC? What do we say? Our LLC is dedicated to your LLC, a lifelong connection. That's kind of what we do. What do we say? You know, and that's what real people who are really in dentistry do. 